Hi everyone, this is a very, very impromptu video. This only came about about 10 minutes ago and I was talking to a, a lovely friend of mine on Instagram and she was saying that, she asked me what deck it was that I had in my uh, altar table from previous videos and I thought I had done uh, a walkthrough of this deck and I suspect what's probably more likely is that it's part of another video it's not been singularly done I can't remember and I'm sure and I know that there are other videos out there because she found some but this is a very uh, I think very underrated deck maybe I don't know I'm, I'm notoriously bad for not watching a lot of YouTube videos on decks um, partly because I'm going to run out of money if I keep looking at other decks. I've had this a long time and uh, I say a long time in my, <laughs> in, in my collection I've had it quite a long time I've, I've, and, and I've used it on and off over um, a period uh, it's, it's come out periodically um, and I, I for the life of me I can't remember without finding the original video where I think I must have at least mentioned it if I didn't show it where I first saw this I really can't even remember I can barely remember what I did yesterday for some reason at the moment I I'm just really tired all the time um, I'm sleeping a lot I'm just going to turn that music down a little bit because it's right next to the right sorry it's right next to the laptop and I'm not sure where the sounds coming from so yeah so um, I can't remember where I saw this um, but it's not one you see very much and um, I can't remember what I was just saying previously to um, jumping up to turn the music level down but um, it does I think lend itself beautifully to doing the fate spread so for those of you who follow Nina from Shuffle Tarot she works extensively with the mother piece which is also a very um, oh what's the right word for that deck it's a very I think it's a very earthy deck but uh, you know you know whatever anyway um, and she uses the fate spread which is the split between the majors the minors and the court cards on a weekly or daily basis or whatever and I've got the mother piece and it's down the caravan so I didn't have any any way of doing it on a sort of weekly or daily basis here so I grabbed my uh, the star that never walks around deck because it's also a round deck and also because I intend to do a video on moving into the new uh, year which for us witches um, who follow the the um, is it the Celtic New Year? But it starts in November with Samhain and etc. Um, so for me, going into autumn, going into winter, going into shadow work, whatever, is all about um, my, my journey. And part of that for me, I want to work quite closely with ancestors, um, not blood ancestors, but more ancestral work on a on a higher plane anyway so this deck I feel lends itself beautifully now this book is exceptional so I'm going to start with the book um, now I am a bit rusty because although I do use the book it's quite a while since I've actually read it through but you can see it is tabbed um, and most of them are um, I will read you a little bit of the introduction not all of it the Native American traditions and legends with which I grew up are the basis for most of the information included in these pages. 
I have related to and used Native American spirituality and imagery since childhood. The observations I make here, however, can be adapted to any belief system or tradition. Interestingly enough, while talking to my lovely friend, who, who I, I won't name because I haven't asked her permission if she's happy for me. We talk quite often. She's a huge, hugely important person in my life. Um, and she was saying how the Native American and the Celtic sort of Druidry systems do work very well together, which I think if you look back into our sort of history, you can see that why that would be, because the cultures were so much more about living with nature and how it worked. So I feel they can work quite well together. Uh, it matters not whether you cast a circle, construct a wheel, or use some other form of ritual, or none at all. The star that never walks around can guide you on your trail of wisdom. Designing the star that never walks around deck was a very spiritual and meaningful experience for me. I truly feel that it is blessed by the spirits and will help you on your spiritual journey. Perhaps the story of how the deck came into being will help you better understand my dedication to it. Now, I'm, I'm not going to read any further because I don't want to take away from, from the book. I, I'd rather you got the deck. It is very well priced from what I can gather still. And it was very well priced when I bought it. And in fact, just reading that makes me think I need to go back and read the book. You know, I'm, I'm, I periodically get the deck out, but, you know, I think that if you're going to study one particular area, perhaps of ancestry, then that would be quite useful. So uh, we have the tarot basics, which is fine. Um, learning about the cards. I'm just going to flick through, but there's quite a lot of information in this book, which um, I'm just trying to think of the other book that I've recently been reading that's, that's the same, but it's really nice when you come across a book that does have uh, more than just the tarot meanings in them. So um, they've, she's changed the names of the uh, miners, which is fine. And she separates the, the court cards. So hence my, my calling tabbing. Um, she talks about the imagery of the deck. Now, I really, really love this imagery. It's, um, the word basic is wrong. It's not, it's not basic. It's just, it's simplicity in, and that's what I really like about it. Um, she does all sorts of lovely little bits about, um, the, you know, green is earth energies, red is fire energies, purples are air. I tend to use yellow as, as air, but um, blue is water, which is, you know, you can see where I've read through bits and, and how I've, you know, tabbed it so I can find it again. Turtles are representing the earth sign. Now, I, I, I must confess I did struggle with this because to me, a turtle lives in the water although it can go on the land. So I would have gone with tortoises, but maybe tortoises and turtles are perhaps of a similar, well, I mean, obviously they are similar. Um, but if I saw a turtle, my immediate thought was it was water. So I've had to kind of retrain my mind not to think like that. Um, frog is the water sign, which obviously makes complete sense. Butterfly is the air sign, which I love, and the Thunderbird represents the fire signs. Now, I hadn't learned anything about Thunderbirds, of course, other than the children's program from when I was a child. So that was fascinating, and, and that has come back round again for me, because recently I was looking at, um, I've got a tattoo that I'm having done tomorrow, hopefully, which was booked way back in April, and... Um, just kept getting put off for obvious reasons and originally it was going to be a phoenix um, but I couldn't find what I wanted um, and 
Then I was doing work with this deck and the Thunderbird came up and I found that that myth was very in keeping. Um, and um, as I said uh, many times before, I love synchronicity. So the Thunderbird representing fire for me works just beautifully. It really does. Um, there's a grounding affirmation, which I shamefully haven't used, but you can see up to that. So again, actually pulling this book out is really quite a, a useful thing. It, it's going to make me go back and um, do it again, which I, I think makes sense. But because I've been using it for this particular fate spread um, and finding it very illuminating, I didn't pull the book out because I, I didn't, I mean, I pulled it out perhaps to give me more insight into what I read into each of the cards, but um, it will be good to go back over and do this again. Um, she also has a code of ethics. Again, I think that's quite nice. Um, and then we're going to move into some of the nice sort of chunkier bits. So numbers and keywords. So this is really nice. If you want some info about numbers, she's listed them here. So if you're doing perhaps Tarot de Marseille and you want to um, follow along with um, Tom Benjamin's study of numbers and, and this would be a lovely place to incorporate that into your study. So it goes through all the different numbers. Um, I think it's quite interesting how different tarot systems work with the numbers slightly differently. So what perhaps RWS might look at for eights isn't necessarily what they are in another in another deck. So um, which is why I always try to work with the the energy of the creation of a deck because. I'm not always convinced that you can pull up the Rider Waite system to work with every um, tarot deck if it wasn't built for that. Um, then we get into the seven directions and the four elements. The four cardinal directions, which is something I do work with, which is something I really like. And it's really quite informative. Um, interestingly enough she associates East with cups presumably from her geographical point of view that makes sense and I've heard this before is that you know when you're setting up your altar or when you're doing your cardinal points in perhaps circle casting or protection if you were by the sea and it was facing uh, east, you wouldn't necessarily associate air with east. So, again, you can obviously do what you want with it. You can intuitively work with it how you like. But I still do like the fact that um, she pulls all this information together. Um, and it just, it builds on just the basics which I really really like so I think you could do and I probably will do as so I'm going to do my ancestral work and this decks out use this as a long-term study I've got the mother piece I've got the mother piece books and I, I, I think I could apply those to this to a point but um, this deck I've connected with more so than even the mother piece so um, anyway uh, what else have we got in here the three spiritual directions she talks about obviously that's above below and within so again adding on to your knowledge it's just such an informative book uh, and the elementals which I really like because quite often we I, I personally forget this part of it whereas kings are air Queens of Water, Knights of Fire, and I, I think if you if if you don't do readings every day, or 
if you do one sort of major reading a month or whatever and you can go deeper into it rather than pulling a card for the day and going oh yes that's the I don't know I had the Empress today from uh, Mystic Mondays you know there's so much in that card that I really should be delving deep into and this this deck gives you this book gives you just those you know added ingredients that perhaps you you don't know I mean maybe you do maybe you're not lazy like me um, and I think sometimes less is more you know if you're going to I used to pull three cards for a day sometimes I still do today I actually did I pulled from all the decks on my on my um, on my altar and they read very well together but I didn't go deep into them what I did is what I often do is read them almost as a sentence and I get the gist of it I don't go into them deeply so sometimes I think it's nice just to pull one other significant cards then it goes in to um, what what some of the major cards and what they're associated with so the Emperor is Aries and the date of um, the birth date for that so again some really nice information that they bring in here court cards and their astrological assignments karmic cards there's just I'm gonna have to reread this book I'm just gonna give up trying to sleep no wonder I sleep want to sleep all day I'm so tired that's what I was saying I've been feeling exhausted and tired and when I go down the caravan all I seem to do is sleep in fact I've been sleeping probably more than I should but I seem to be permanently tired at the moment I think a lot of that is stress stress with my job um, so many changes uh, are occurring for me in that field and life just generally I think um, I've heard it said quite a lot in by other people um, whose channels I've been watching there is this very strong feeling of transition of, of real change of real um, letting go of the old and starting a new path and I, again I even got death today from um, the she-wolf tarot and I always welcome these cards because I, I know that this means I'm shedding an old skin and I'm starting, you know, again, I'm, it's a, a new phase. But the shift feels very much as it's on all levels, not just on a, a physical level or an emotional level or a spiritual level. I feel very much as though there is a huge fundamental shift occurring in me. And because I've been working with shadow work um, all year I think that although I think you should work with shadow um, your shadow self generally all the time I think you do have to balance that otherwise I think you can exhaust yourself and I think that might be what I've done a little bit I think that I've had some stuff that I needed to work through and that's Part of what I was going to you know talk about in my next video um, so I think sometimes we can be very hard on ourselves and I have questions that I haven't got answers to yet so I'm still delving in there but I think I need to come back um, and go in slightly on a different angle because I feel that um, what I'm doing is thrashing about and not actually achieving very much so um, <clears throat> anyway back to the deck <laughs> waffling away again we've got reversals and timings and that's one of the things I actually do like about working with a round deck is that it does give you more subtlety in your message and I think that's actually really important. Um, I've got quite a few decks at the moment that I would say I really love working with for various reasons, but I think the circular decks have got so much to offer, um, and I couldn't, you know, I, I couldn't not have this deck in my collection. I've got quite in. Um, 
It also talks about timings in the tarot, so thunderbirds being fire or fall, frogs being water or spring, butterflies are summer, and turtles are winter. So turtles being earth, we're coming into autumn and then into winter. So you've got the sort of bare earth, which is really lovely. Uh, the suits, the thunderbirds are west, frogs are east, as we said. Butterflies are south. So butterflies are um, air, so completely different um, cardinal points. And turtles are north, which is correct for Earth, if you follow that system. Whereas thunderbirds would be south here, they're west for this particular deck. Um, she talks about spreads. You can see I've highlighted bits. There's some lovely bits in here, you know, a couple of spreads that they've used. The karmic spread, gosh, I better do that one, I think. <laughs> um, and then we get into the individual cards and their interpretation. We've got the major, and I will show you the deck in a minute. Obviously, the, the images are in black and white, but this, I think, is quite an old deck. Um, I say old, I don't know, when was this book? Can I see? It's getting really dark in here, guys. Sorry, but I didn't put the light on for the same reasons as previously. So 2000, so it's not that old, but with all the amount of decks that are out there, it's hard to keep up, I think. So the, then the courts are next, and they are separated from the miners, interestingly enough. Um, so it works quite well with the fates spread, which is obviously the mother piece's um, creation. Um, and then we get into the minor ones, and I just I find it easier just to tab the different uh, courts, uh, minors. For goodness sake, suits, what am I talking about? Um, and they're not onerous, which... I do think, actually, if you consider how much you can incorporate from here is quite reassuring, because otherwise you could spend days on just one card. And sometimes, as much as I love it when a book goes deep, and when you get two or three pages on one card, that's quite heavy going. By the time you've read a spread, you've lost the day. Um, so these are quite small gives you message, gives you upright, gives you reverse, doesn't give you the two sides, um, so east and west for want of a better word, which is a bit of a shame, but I think it is probably covered in that section of, of you know, being circular. I've just put some incense on and I've obviously overdone it. Now I can't breathe. <laughs> oh, for the love of it all. I, do you know what, I seriously, I. I've had so many issues this year with my he health things that are small, insignificant really, but for me have been quite a big deal. And I just feel like, when is it going to get better, <laughs> please? Anyway, um, so yeah, so I use the mother piece reference for how to, um, read the cards if they are in the east or west position um so if they are let me just move that out of the way if they are upright then and obviously reversed is quite straightforward if they are to uh, the uh, i want to say that's the east for me if they're pointing as then i would read that as uh, this is something that is still being trying to be achieved whereas if it's facing as if it's going to the, <laughs> it's my west okay to the right okay let's do that left and right let yes let's simplify it up and down left and right so if it's going to the right then to me that is that that, that emphasizes the upright meeting uh, upright meaning Whereas to the left, I would say that it's possibly 
striving towards achieving that. Um, so that's how I, I would um, use the circular system. The backs are beautiful. Oops. <laughs> um, and like I say, I'm a, I'm, I'm a massive softie for Native American anything. I love the culture, I love the people, I love everything that they represent and stand for and I, I just think they're an absolutely beautiful um, nation of people as are the Eskimos, all the ancient cultures are the beautiful, uh, with their beautiful individual ethos and way of living with Gaia is such a uh, rich knowledge of information that we need to tap into. So um, what I love about this deck is I do have small hands and these work really well. They're not in order other than <laughs> the four to the bottom, but they're in majors, courts and minors for, for because of it. And I'm just going to very uh, quickly, because I've waffled on, walk you through these wonderful cards. And the fact that they have been designed by um, uh, do you know what? I should have given you her name, to be fair, shouldn't I? Hold on. Stella Bennett, um, who is obviously uh, native and, and can use this, her wisdom and knowledge to create a very authentic deck. And I love it. And you've got so much information in here. So we've even got... Um, astrological signs and I, I, yeah I just I think it's beautiful we've got a lovely rainbow for the full um, and I'm quite sure that actually if I read I won't read all of them because I, I, I really don't have time for that but um, she will talk about uh, the full being the beginning and the end um, and then a new beginning um, and I think she will go into what the things the I can't get my words out the um, I like to know what what the things that, that are in the picture mean so uh, in his hand he carries a branch that represents the grounding energies that give him the insight to make wise decisions and it's those kind of um, important aspects for me when someone creates a deck that if the sim if, if there is symbology in there, I want to know what it means. So that's really lovely. Um, we have this wonderful devil card with this fire um, underneath him. And uh, let me just quickly see. I, I really don't want to, um, I won't go through every single card, but it is so beautiful that in a way it, it deserves longer perhaps than even I'm giving it um, I'm pretty sure it says uh, what um, uh, stands within the flames of his own baser nature there you are so that's what the flames represent in this particular he is cloaked in black signifying the evils and temptations of the world and in his right hand he holds a baton of coop, which gives him the ability to strike his fatal blow at any time. <clears throat> Absolutely gorgeous cards. And like I said, very simple. The lovers. Am I doing? Let me bring this up a bit. There you go. The star. I suppose what I should have done was find the section about why it's called the star that never walks around. And I should know the answer to that, but I have many decks and when I first got this deck, I would have read it and now I, I actually can't remember, which is shameful. The Wheel of Fortune. So here we have the lioness, which is lovely. The high priestess. And to be honest, 
I love this deck, but it isn't actually until you do something like this that you appreciate, actually this is a really lovely deck. There's a lot more to this deck than just um, the very basic meanings. Hierophant's a lovely card, um, and, and again, doesn't represent a, a person. There's no um, man in there sitting in the normal way. Um, we've got the chariot. Justice. And conveniently the moon, while the howling in the background. I would really like a walk of my own. <laughs> I tried to get an Alsatian as a, an option, but my husband was not having any of it. Hanged man. Um, so very, slightly different. I don't know if you can see, there is a another figure in in this in the background here. So I'd have to read up on that. The Empress. I say this every time, but this is my card for the year. The world. I, I think that's a stunning image. You can see this face. It's so cleverly done. The magician. I don't know why it came out like that. The magician. Um, death. That music reminds me of the X Files. Temperance, which I started to watch again. It is quite dated, but I do love it. My husband hates it, so I, I can only watch it when he's not around. The Tower. And I love this card, and this is the card that I'm working with at the moment, and this is Judgment. And look at this incredible spider. Um, if he's a demon, I think. Um, and this, it's just uh, incredible, the web, and yeah, I love it. So those are the majors, and then we've got, and these are in no particular order, so the page of turtles, so this is the page of earth, Oops. the king of thunderbirds will be the king of fire, or wands, queen of thunderbirds, going for a family hat trick here page of thunderbirds and you can see that she does create the pages to look like children which i think is really interesting where was the did we see the we didn't see that oh, i haven't seen the knight yet well he's i don't know he's not yeah he is the, well the knight of frogs here is um got the frog here but we've got the traditional sort of Horse for the night. Page of Frogs, and again you can see child. It's, it is drawn to look like a child to represent that younger energy. The King of Butterflies, so the King of Air or Swords, I suppose. My brain's struggling to, to keep making the transitions. Queen of Turtles, Queen of Earth, Queen of Pentacles. And there's the Knight of the Thunderbird. So we've got that horse represented again. And this absolutely gorgeous Thunderbird up the top here. Love it. The Queen of Frogs. Queen of Cups or the Queen of Water. And this dinky little frog there. The Queen of Butterflies, Swords or Air. And you can feel the movement in her hair. I love it. I, when I, if I can, if if it's, I love the wind. I, I'm very associated for air with air, even though I'm an earth sign. And I love it when the wind catches my hair. And I try to get pictures of it, and I post them on Instagram. But I just look like I'm a mad person. <laughs> I am. King of Frogs. Where's the little froggy? He must be in there. It's got rather dark. He's probably. He must be in there. I can't believe he's not. The King of Turtles. 
and the page of butterflies again this child so cute the night of butterflies so much movement in that night actually and the night of turtles so we've got this horse and the wind oh, i love that look at that look at that for wind it's there even though it's a bit outside it doesn't matter um and then we are on to the miners and again they won't be in order so i had i had the five of no the eight of frogs upside down that's my card for, for at the moment can you see that and although it's water there's a lot more going on in here we've got this wonderful horse represented in the in the sort of clouds um, There is, I, sometimes I do struggle with the numbering because it's handwritten and I, I do get confused a little bit with that um, on some of them. But you can tell the difference because that's an ace whereas the other one is clearly a seven. Um, but you, you know, you could be forgiven for getting it wrong but of course the butterfly representing air um is a, is a lovely yeah that's right isn't it yeah the two of frogs the two of cups i love this card full of butterflies Eight of butterflies. So again, you don't necessarily see the standard right away in this at all. You know, some of them link a little bit more, perhaps, but in certainly in, in some of the cards, but but by no means all of them. I mean, the eight of turtles, uh, rather the five of turtles, is that um, is quite a harsh card in the right away. It doesn't feel quite like that in this card three of frogs three of cups normally represented by three women celebrating i love the way they're cuddling up together the three is that the three or the five of butterflies interesting i'd say that's a five Nine of turtles, wow. Nine would be normally the woman, the nine of pentacles, pentacles, or nine of earth is the woman in the garden admiring her beautiful handiwork. And here we have this Indian wearing a bear. Two of butterflies. Four of Frogs, much more similar, in my opinion, to the Four of Cups in the Rider Waite. The Ace of Frogs, Five of Thunderbirds, so it would be Five of Air. No, Five of Fire, what am I talking about? Five of Wands. Ah! So that would be normally to the, the five competing, the com competitive nature, um, but not depicted like that in this card. And then we have the five of butterflies, which is the five of swords, which is, again, could be competitive, but is that sort of element of um, combat. I'm trying to find the right words. Six of butterflies um, would be the six of swords, which is one of my favourite depictions, which is all, usually the boat that's travelling across the water. Sometimes you've got the choppy water on one side and the calm on the other. So, Three of turtles. Eight of thunderbirds. I know there's this temptation to go, I'll go, 
Thunderbird talk. <laughs> Trident. <clears throat> Five of Frogs. And there you can feel again that sense of sorrow and loss. Two of Turtles. Lovely yin yang. Four of Thunderbird. Ace of Turtles, Three of Thunderbirds, Ten of Butterflies, you've got these wonderful, are they crickets I would say? Two of Thunderbirds. Eight of Turtles. Isn't he magnificent? <sighs> Ace of Thunderbirds. Now, there you go. Lovely. Look, I've just fallen in love with this myth. <laughs> Thunderbirds, Ten of Turtles, it's either a crow or a raven but I, I, I can't tell you which one, Seven of Butterflies, Nine of Butterflies, mmm, Six of Turtles. Ten of Frogs. Seven of Frogs. <laughs> and nine of Thunderbirds. <laughs> the six of Thunderbirds. Seven. And that's beautiful too. And the four of turtles. So I hope you've enjoyed this walkthrough. Um, as I say, it wasn't planned, but actually I'm very glad that I've done it because although I've been working with this deck, um, I hadn't I need to refresh with the book. There's there's a lot more in there that um, really you can work deep with and sometimes I think it is quality not quantity so thank you if you stayed with me and I do hope that um, if you don't have this this deck I would say that it is a really powerful but very gentle deck and well worth having in your collection so thank you for watching and I will be back with a video on uh, the upcoming month and stuff but just not today so take care everyone have a good weekend bye